Hi everyone, I wanted to show the beginnings of my March mini album for Marion Smith's 365 day challenge. Um, I didn't get to do the February, but I did do January, and so I thought I'd jump in and join March. Um, so what I did is I've decided that March is going to be a combination of things. For one, it's truly going to be a scrapbook or maybe like a smash junk journal type of combination. Um, because there are several things I've been wanting to try and this type of journal is just perfect to do it in. So what I did to start off is um, this is a Maya Road chipboard album. It looked like this with the chipboard pages inside of it. It looked really similar. So all I did was paint it with this brown ink. You can see Maya Road is there and I still haven't finished the back but um, I painted it all with that brown ink and then I took a scrap piece of paper that I had and cut out all these tags and layered them on here. After I layered them, I put glossy accents on to give each little tag some dimension. I added these little rings. They were yellow, but I dyed them with my black Adirondack inks and then filled them in with glossy accents. So you can see it adds a lot of dimension to that page. This is Maya Road trim. It's satin pleat trim cream along with their tool trim and then a vintage trinket button right there in the center. Um, this is going to be my closure. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to finish that off yet but um, that's the beginnings of it. So again what I've done is all the papers in here are leftover scraps. Let me see if I can pull this stack over here. They're leftover scraps from what I worked on in January and I have a huge pile of them. So I'm just trying to use up truly scraps that I have laying around and in my scrap stash and putting them in here. So I used some as the liners for the inside. Then I also have a lot of extra paint. Um, a friend of mine, I don't know what project she was working on, but she gave me all these paints. And I have anywhere from three to four bottles of each color. So I'm trying to use these up before they get too old. These are almost empty now. Um, so I'm trying to use up at least four of the bottles. So what I did was I took the chipboard pieces and I painted all of them. And at the end of this video I'll show exactly how I did these pages. But just to let you know real quick, I just painted each chipboard piece, ran it through the big shot with the Sizzix or Cuddlebug embossing folders, and then sanded it down really hard with a coarse grain sander. And so you can see each page is distressed and it just gave a really nice effect to the chipboard pieces, but at the same time I was able to use up a lot of these paints that I have laying around. This one was again that paint. For the lighter paint I went across with some stays on ink. Again that will be you know covered with pictures and things like that. So there's that. Just has a really nice distressed grungy look. This one I actually took a piece of the cardboard and ripped it and so that kind of gave more of the distressed look on that and this was just with the stitches and then this again is with more stays on ink over the paint so those are the pages now another thing I had laying around that I want to make sure to use up are these cans by We Are Memory Keepers um, I think it was scrapbooksteals.com advertised this this past week that they were selling some and I had forgotten I had these. They're kind of in the back of a shelf. I've had these for about four years so I figured I'd use these up and there's another can also full of letters and things like that. So how I started using those is in the corners of my tabs like this is for day one, this is day two, uh, day three is going to be an insert, then day four, day five, and what I'm going to do is there's going to be a paper in between each one that will be like day six and seven, and then this one would be seven, eight, so that my uh, journal isn't too bulky. So there'll just be one sheet of paper in between, or a pocket in between each of the tabs, and that will equal my 31 days in the very end. 
So that's my plan for the March journal, and I will now show you how I did all of these uh, chipboard pages on the inside. So I want to show how I got the distressed look on this piece of chipboard. This is one of the pages that came inside of the Maya Road album. You'll see all the chipboard pages look like this, and these are pretty thick, so um, they could be pretty tough to run through. So I had to do a little bit of experimenting in order to get this look on my chipboard. So I just wanted to demonstrate that real quickly. First of all, don't be afraid to experiment with your Big Shot. So all I did was, for example, put my folder in here like so. So I'm going to do this one with a cuddle bug because I know on this day my kids have some friends coming over. So we're going to do the friend one for day four. Um, what I did, what since this one, I really don't know the thickness of this chipboard. I just did some experimentation and that's what happened to work for this particular thickness of chipboard is I just put my multi-purpose platform, platform all tabs down, no base plate. I put my embossing folder and my chipboard in there and then I put the top plate. And so when you see, when I roll it through, it's really not too tight. I feel a little bit of pressure, but I'm not forcing it through. It's just rolling in very easily. So that comes out. And then you can see it is embossed on there very nicely. I also really love the postcard embossing folder by Tim Holtz. So I'm going to do the same thing with that. I put my all tabs down, embossing folder, and chipboard, and then just one of the cutting plates instead of two, and just roll it through. And you can see again, it's just a little snug, but it's not too tight. I can still roll very easily. So again, this is another one of those folders that can be turned into various directions. So to emboss the rest of my impression here, I'm just going to turn my card and run it through in this direction. And then you can see I have a continual pattern on the entire piece of chipboard. So now it's ready to paint and to use my sanding block on. So another thing you can use are these little stitch type of borders um, that you can get with your Sizzix as well. This came with the sewing one. This one right here called Pattern. So um, these three came in the same kit. Now when you're putting them on your chipboard you want to make sure that again you have the Tim Holtz part facing you if that's the part that you want to stand out. So the nice thing with these is you don't have to make them straight. They're meant to use at different angles and whatever positions you want to use them in. Just make sure that you're using all of these face up otherwise you'll have some embossed and others will be debossed and that may not be the effect you're going for. So you end up with a nice little series of stitch marks here. The next page I'm going to work on is the friend page since my kids have friends coming over tomorrow after Bible study. So um, this one I think I'll just use some wild honey.
You'll see these, I've only done about five pages so far, but the first two that I started on are almost completely dry already. So um, it's not going to be a problem for me to start stacking these as I go along, since I'm going to be distressing them here in a minute. So to get this look here, what I do really quickly is I just take a sanding block with the roughest side of my sandpaper and I just start gliding against the grain. And you can do it as light or as deep as you like. And so you see it just takes that layer of paint that I just did on that and takes it off. Now I probably don't want to do it much more than this because I'm liking that look right there and I don't want the word postcard to get too blurred. So I really like this look and I do the same thing on the back. And the back is going to look a little bit different because this side is debossed. So this side I do do a little bit harder than I do on the front. And so that's my back side. And so I'll do that to all the sheets that I have going inside of my album. I'm wanting to pre-make as many pages as I can because I know I have a busy month ahead. So that's why I'm doing a lot of these pages in advance. 